Hi everyone, welcome back to another live stream. If you don't know me, my name is Gwen and I run a YouTube channel called Faraday Academy where I do mostly VJS and Django content. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description below. So today I'm going to be building the last uh, free code camp project or the last front end one of the series again in Vue.js and it, it's the Pomodoro clock. So yeah, you can find this on free code camps website. So I do want to show you. So about five years ago, I think, uh, yeah, around five years ago when I was looking for my first developer job, um, I built this clock. You can see the background image is broken now, but it basically had a timer and I could change the time and I could take a break if I wanted to start. Oh good, it start and pause and etc. So I thought that was kind of cool. I can find all my old projects and rebuild them now five years later. Um, okay, so let me close that. Of course, this is kind of spaceshipy looking. You know, it doesn't look great. So, hi Anish, hi Tech Stats, good to see you again. So, I'm gonna close that. Um, in my repo, so this is also linked in the description below. So you can see Free Code Camp projects view in my GitHub, and I let me. So in the Pomodoro clock folder, I have a README with some of the requirements of a Pomodoro clock, basically a timer, a, a special timer with a special name. Um, and this is the mockup that I have. So uh, Pomodoro, uh, short break, long break. And then I'm thinking about having a settings file or settings menu and pop-up. So, um, yeah, users can change the n amount of time for each thing, like the amount of time for the actual Pomodoro clock or the short break or the long break. And I have all of those in the requirements here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So this time, actually, uh, let me zoom in, actually. Yeah. So this time I'm using, um, of course, Vue.js, VCLI to bootstrap the project. And then I'm going to be using uh, Vuetify for the UI components and design. I used Bootstrap a couple times, Incline once, um, but I just really like Vuetify. I think it it'll give us a nice design. It's way more than we need for this project, but um, yeah, we can just use what we need out of the library. So let me go to my terminal. So I'm in Free Code Camp Projects view. And I'm going to cd into the Pomodoro clock folder. And now in this folder, I have readme and mockups. I'm going to create my app in this folder. So I'll use view create. And then app name, I'll just call it Pomodoro. Or Pomodoro app, actually. Because I think that's the standard that I've been using for the rest of the apps. Okay, so I'm going to actually manually select features this time. So I don't need a router or a view X again. Um, CSS, yeah, so that's the one I want. I want to use SAS. So do that. Um, ESLint with error prevention only, yeah. Normally I do prettier or something, but for the stream, I just like fewer uh, issues with, I guess, non-error linting. Um, uh, lint on save is fine. Dedicated config files. All right. So while that's building, hi, Sassy, how are you? So that should take a minute to build. And then I'll go ahead and pull up the Vuetify documentation. So 
I can't remember if it's Vutify.js. Alright, here's the documentation. And basically, yeah, they recommend a CLI install as a CLI plugin, so it'll set up everything it needs to set up for me. And then I believe, oh no, it's going to create all this for me. So I think I won't have to import anything else on my own. I'll just do view, add, viewify. And I'm still waiting for the project to build. All right, it's almost done. Evoking generators, that's a good sign. Additional dependencies. I'm good. I'm happy to be uh, able to stream on Free Code Camp today. Um, let's see. CD Pomodoro. Okay, good. So it's built. And now let me go into my app. Is Vitify similar material UI in React? Yeah, Vitify is a material design framework. Um, material UI, I haven't used that for a while, but I think, I mean, the look of it is definitely going to be, but I don't know how similar all the components are and stuff, what they offer versus what Vitify offers. Um, okay, so I'm in my app. Let me open this in a code editor. And now I will run the development server. And I should be able to open it localhost 8080. Cool. And I have my uh, Vue.js boilerplate. Oh yeah, before I do anything here, because I want um, Vue.ify to set itself up for me. So before I change files on my own, I'm going to do, oh wait, not npm. I'm going to do Vue add Vue.ify to add that CLI plugin. There are uncommitted changes. Yes, I know about those. All right. So it's asking me to choose a preset and I'm just going to do the recommended one. So this will add all the setup and config for me. Yeah. So let me run the server again. It does take a while for this to build. All right. So anyway, in source here, in app, um, Vitify added all the Beautify components here, and then they set up my app. Oh wait, it's in here. 
Yeah, they set up the V app wrapper and then yeah, V content for me to put my main content in. And then they gave me this app bar that I'm not actually going to use for this because I'm going to use some tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. <clears throat> All right, so that got rid of it. And now the rest of the uh, Beautify components here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those as well. And those are in Hello World. So let me just delete the Hello World component. Delete that. And I'm going to create a new file, which will be, I guess I'll just call it pomodoro.view. And in here, let me put a template. Just a div for right now. And now let me import that component into here instead of hello world. So Pomodoro. And Pomodoro. Okay. Uh, components. Pomodoro. Okay, so now this component is registered, and now my page only says clock. All right, so now I need to uh, look at my mock-up. So I'm going to be doing most of the styling first, at least getting these tabs and then some kind of box in the middle for the timer and getting all this to display. And then I'm going to start uh, making the actual timer function. So first, I'm going to get some tabs, I think. So let me go to Beautify and search for tabs. OK, B tabs component. This is fine. If I go down, I can see some more examples. like this one where everything is contained in one box and I believe this is inside a card because that's pretty similar to what I want. Yeah, it's inside a card and then they have the V card title. Um, I don't know if I'll have a title but I definitely want tabs so let me go into Pomodoro now I'll just delete this row. And let me add a V card. And then V tabs. All right. And so I need a V model for the current tab. Um, background color, color. Grow. Hmm, I wonder what grow is. Oh, I think it's where it um, stretches the whole width of the container. Maybe. I can try it. So let me first V model the tabs. And I'm going to say, I guess I'll say timer type because my tabs are all uh, if the Pomodoro long break or short break. So I have to create those here in a script tag. I'll create a data method. So, oh wait, didn't need that. All right. I'm going to do timer type and this will be, I guess I'll do one um, because the, I think the tabs will default to a number like zero, one, two. 
unless I denote that it's a string. So let me actually do zero. Okay. And now let me put some actual tabs in here. So it's V tab and that will give me the title at the top. And then I could loop through tabs or yeah, I think I'll loop through the tabs. So let me do, I guess, tab titles as an array. I'm going to call this Pomodoro and the next one short break and the next one long break. And I'll just do a V tab here. Oh, and then a V four directive inside. And so I'll do a title, or I guess tab in tab titles. And then I need a key here. So key, and that will be just tab, because those are all unique names. So, oops. I can close that and then close the tab and then inside the tab of course I want to display the title let me zoom in one okay and then I want to display the title so I'll say tab so let me see how this looks and All right, so I see, I think this is just the card. Don't think it's showing anything. Okay, there's a V card, there's V tabs inside. And V item group. Okay. So I have V tab. Let me see what I'm missing here from the doc. So, okay, they're just looping through the tabs there. And I wonder, because I have the light theme, but it doesn't seem to have anything inside of it anyway, but I could change this to dark, I think, there. And that didn't do anything. So let me undo. I'll have to look up the themes later. But let me see why the tabs aren't displaying. So oh, let me open this up. OK, so in the item group, Tab slider. Yeah, so the tabs aren't displaying at all. Um, so I'm showing tab in tab titles. Yeah, everything should be working. Um, let me take this card and put it more in the center of the page or further down so I can see better. So class equals, I'm going to give it a margin top of 8. OK, so that bring the car, brought the card down. And now I'm going to give it a width. So I think I can say, let's see. Um, progress circular. OK, I don't know if it has classes for width, so I'm just going to add some styling here so I can style the card a little bit. So I'm going to say uh, style, and let me go ahead and use sass here. So I'll do lang equals sass, and then I'll do um, 
what is it? It's probably a V. The class is probably called V card too. Oh, I did. Okay, thanks. I'll go and fix that. Uh, tab, tab titles. Oh, I did. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so here I'm gonna do. Oh, now it's failed to compile. Oh, it doesn't like the dot. Um, anyway, I can just real quick. Yeah, the. Um, the class is V card, so I'm gonna reference the V card class and do um, a width. I'm gonna set a width of. I don't know, 400 pixels. Okay, not, not wide enough. Let me just set it for 600 then. All right, that looks okay. And now I want it centered on the page. So, um, I could do a grid system which would probably belong in the app component. So I could do here, like V container, and then close that, and then uh, V row. Okay, oops. And then inside I'll do a, a V column and then small of six columns and offset small of three columns. Okay, so let me put the quotes around that too. I think I need quotes. All right. Okay, that's pretty good. And all right, now I need the actual card content inside. So let's see. Okay, get out of that component. Now I have V tabs here. And then after, so outside of V tabs, I'll put, oh no, it has to be inside of the tabs. So let me see what component I use for that. Okay, it's V tabs items, V tabs items. And then that's also V modeled to the current tab. So let me do uh, V tabs items, V model. And this will be, I guess, timer type. Okay, and then inside of V tabs items, I would think it's V, yeah, V tab item inside. And then, okay, they're looping through. And they're also doing a card inside, I guess, to give it some spacing. Um, and then they're giving it the prop flat. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. Um, so let me copy this. All right. And Okay, now I have to fix these tab items. So right now I'm just gonna work off of one tab. So I'm gonna completely get rid of the loop. Color basil, I don't think so. Um, oh, there's nothing inside of the card. So what should I put in here? I'll put I guess just 
a placeholder for now, so 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, cool. A timer. And now, so also inside, but that's not giving me any spacing for some reason. I thought it was going to give me uh, spacing, but that's okay. I can add a padding class here then. So class equals padding all of five. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. And now let me add buttons here. So V, is it VBTN or V button? I can't remember. Oh. All right, button. This is one thing I love about the Beautify docs is that they have so many playgrounds so you can test out the buttons in the browser here. But I just want basic button. Yeah, it's VBTN. So I'll do BTN and then I need three buttons. So start and then VBTN uh, stop and then reset and the start button will be um, I guess I can is it color or variant so I can do primary for the start button okay cool and actually these look kind of weird next to each other I wonder I know there's a button group somewhere here, so let me see what the button group looks like. Oh, this looks like they've updated this. I haven't looked at it in a long time. Okay. Multiple toolbars. Um, let me see how it looks with the button group. Where's their basic example so vbtn toggle actually I don't want toggle maybe I'll just leave separate buttons yeah oops didn't mean to get out of there yeah, I'll just leave separate buttons for now. Um, let's see. I have these. Let me make the timer bigger so I can use some of their um, font classes. And what would I call it? Oh, type in their typography section. Text and typography. Okay, material design, so okay, these are their defaults anyway, but I think there's a list of classes for bigger, smaller, I guess maybe I guess maybe that was some other framework I'm thinking of. Alright, so I guess what I'll do here is just add a class of time and then here I'll do time and style that class. By the way, I'm using SAS. If you haven't seen indented syntax before, it's not the default syntax but it's just the one that I usually prefer. Um, I think it's a bit easier to read and write and you also get some other shortcuts that I don't believe are in the regular syntax for SAS. Um, but you can do basically the same things. 
So for time, I'm going to set a font size. And let me just look first at what this font size is. So in the H1, I'm computed. I can see font size is 32 pixels right now. So let me do, let me try 80 pixels, make it really big. Okay, I think that's good. It should be a big timer. Now the font weight is, I wonder if that's just the default. I think it's using Roboto. Yeah, it's using Roboto. Um, I don't know what I have available to me, but I can try setting the font weight so it's not so thick and do like a 400. Okay, cool. I like that better. All right. Um, so that's good. Um, I can also do text align center. Yeah, I like that. And now I guess I should start doing the actual timer and then I can fix other things as I go along. So for the timer, I'm going to use, of course, JavaScript set interval. Actually, this is kind of bothering me real quick. So let me um, go back to tabs just for one second and use that prop to stretch them. I think, I think it's this grow prop that will stretch them all the way across the page. The third tab looks bigger. Yeah, because it, there's this blank space on the edge there. So let me, okay, so in here I'll use grow. Yeah, and now it's, it's completely stretched out all the way across and it looks much better. And with this centered and then the buttons, I'll figure out what to do with them at some point and then add icons to the buttons too. Um, actually, let me go ahead and do that since I'm already doing the styling here. So with the buttons, um, actually the stop button, I'm going to give it a color of error. Yeah. Okay, I have these and actually I'm going to go ahead and get the icons for the buttons because I can do that in a minute. And where is it? Okay, so when Viewtify, when I added it as a VCLI plugin, I think that it, it um, set this up for me, but I can check. So in the plugins, Viewtify, and no, it didn't. Okay, so I want material design. Um, it's already doing everything else for me, so I think I'll just add the icons object here. Icons, and then icon font, which should be MDI, I think. I think that's what it usually use. So icon font, and then MDI, and yeah, let me see if now, so let me go in the start and try to add an icon there. Um, where is it? Yeah, V icon. And then I can pass in the name of the icon that I want. So V icon, and then I'll do MDI dash 
whatever the name of the icon is. So let me see if there's a start icon. This takes a minute to load. Or no, I want a play button, so maybe it will be play. Yeah, I kind of like the circle one. Play, circle, outline. So let me do MDI dash play dash circle dash outline. Okay, cool. And now I have the icon in the button. Now it doesn't look great because I think I have to give it a left prop. Yeah, so it pulls it away from the text. And then let me try to make it small too and see if that looks better. Yeah, I think that fits in with the button size that I have. So now let me do the same thing for the rest of the buttons. So for stop and let's see, oh yeah, I'll copy that. And then I have to figure out, it would be nice if there was just stop circle outline. Oh, there is, nice. And then reset, um, what would reset be called? Um, what was the first thing I typed in? Start. Yeah, I think restart. That's a good one. So let me do restart. Restart. and see. Uh, oh wait, I accidentally changed the stop one. So okay, and now and now I can change the reset button. So Restart. Okay, cool. I think there is actually a refresh one, but, or, okay, reload. We have a reload one. Restart looks good. I really like how that looks for some reason. Maybe I'm just seeing something new. Okay, so let me center these buttons and give them a little bit of spacing. Um, so I can put, I guess I can put a wrapper around the buttons and I could give it a class of button group. Okay, and then close the div. And now, um, actually, so these buttons, or the button group is inside of the card, so I can also do a display flex, and then align items center. Is it align or is it justify? No, 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 it's justify. Uh, justify content. Maybe it's not. Oh, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's because um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, it's because I'm doing flex here and I have two, I have the button group and then I have this. And then I have the H1. Yeah. So you're right, flex direction column. Flex column? Yeah, 
And then here, which, I mean, I already had this though, so. But now I think I can do justify cont content center. Um, or let me just look up flex their flex classes real quick. Okay, so they have justify. Okay, it's just justify. Justify center. And I thought because now I'm doing it as a column, it would be justify center. Let me see. No, I think it's align items center. Let's see, flex align. Align items. They have a line center. Okay. Cool. That's good. Now I'm going to give these like a margin of just a few pixels in between the buttons and see. Um, so I'll just add them as classes here. So let's do, or actually, oh, I don't have it here, but I'll just add it down here. V, B, T, N, and then add it as a margin. Let's see, margin left, margin right. Is there a margin Y? I can't remember. I'll just do margin and then do um, zero for top and bottom and then two pixels for left and right. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. It separates the buttons a little bit. All right, I'm happy with this. And now Um, yeah, this is probably the best looking of all the projects that I've made so far. So I almost want to take a second and just look, look at it. I think it looks pretty nice. Um, so now, yeah, let me set up the timer. So in here, I'm going to need some methods, methods, an object, and I'm going to need start. And then a pause. Yeah, I'm just going to use stop for pause because there's really no difference. Thanks. I don't think I don't see any difference between stop and pause because this is just stopping the timer and resetting is what actual actually resets the timer. So uh, I have start now. I'll need stop and reset. Okay, so I think on my old Pomodoro I did have pause but I had no stop. So I think it was just like renaming of it. Uh, start, stop, reset. Okay, so I'm going to start with this, the start one, which I need a set interval and pass it a function. And then I need the interval to run every one second. So wait, 1000 milliseconds. And then, hmm. So every second I'm going to have to recalculate the minutes and seconds here. So I'm gonna, well, I'm, I'll need these on data. So I'll need um, minutes. And let's see. 
Uh, this, yeah, because I'll need to make these strings at some point because I need leading zeros on them. Um, hmm. Let, let me make them a string and see. Uh, okay, so let me do this then. Let me do total seconds, which will be a number. So it starts off with the default is, tw is well, no, I, based off of the timer type. Okay, so let me just lay these out. So I need a display minutes and a display seconds, right? And those will both be strings. And then I need some kind of actual total time that I can recalculate every second and then change or update the display times. Um, so let me do, well, should I call it total? I think inside of these minutes and seconds I should put them inside of a display object anyway. So let me put these inside and then, so inside of display and then Let me say total seconds and actually this I could do that as a computed property. Um, no, no, because I'm going to reset the number of total seconds if they change to like Pomodoro short break long break. Okay, so I'll have total seconds and the default again will be 25, so 25 minutes. I have to put that in seconds, so 60 seconds. Okay. So I think, I think that's good. Right? And then let me put uh, the display actually up here now. So let me see. Um, so this will be a display dot minutes and then this display dot seconds. Okay, and it's still displaying the same thing because I have those as strings down here. Now the total seconds, let me look at the total seconds. Oh, I did uh, get view dev tools in Brave. So just in case I'm having to look at this a lot, I'll open the Brave browser so you can see it better. Okay, so in Pomodoro, yeah, total seconds is 1500. Okay, so now I wanna start um, actually, so now I need to initialize, figure out how I'm going to initialize these, the seconds here. So I could actually do these as computed properties, computed, and then um, and then based off of the total seconds, the display minutes and display seconds updates. So I think that's what I should do, right? Um, but then, yeah, then I would, I guess I would call them, I would get rid of them in data and then just call uh, oh, display minutes and display seconds and computed and then based off of the total seconds so let's see for minutes I would just return total oh yeah and then I have to check if it needs a leading zero Okay, but first let me do total seconds times 
60. And then I have to wait. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. It's divided by 60. It's like that's going to be a really big number of minutes. So total seconds divided by but divided by 60 and then floor it. So math.floor and then this one will be display. So this one I'll have to do the remainder, just like trim the seconds off the end. So I'll do um, okay, so total yeah, total seconds divided or I think I can just do the modulus, right? And get the remainder of seconds. That should work. And now I have to check. So here I'm going to do const seconds equals um, total seconds. Actually, not const. So be let seconds is total seconds modulus 60. And now I need to check if that's a string. So if, no, I mean, if it's less than 10. So if it's a single digit, I need to append a le oh, give me an error. So I need to append a leading zero if it's a single digit or the clock's gonna look really weird. So if seconds is less than, 10 I kind of don't want to change between s strings and numbers here um, so if seconds is less than 10 I guess I could return a leading zero plus seconds and that would turn it into a string otherwise I would just return seconds oh am I missing something oh total seconds is not defined oh it's this dot total seconds yeah, this dot total seconds and this dot total seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna actually need this same logic inside of display minutes. So I could do another method here to call like if seconds is greater than 10, so I can do um, format time. Let's see. Um, okay, so let me do format time and move this out of here, I guess. So it would be um, yeah, let me move all this logic into here. Minutes could probably not need the leading zero. The thing is, if I don't have a leading zero here, then it's going to change like this whole timer would shift to the left. So it's going to move around the page. I want everything to stay in the same place. So the same number of digits, I guess. Okay, so I'm just going to pass in time as a number. So time return a string. 
if time is less than 10, return 0 plus time. So now I can call format time. Oh, else I need to return something. So return time that to string, just to make it always return a string. So now I can do, I can always call the format time function and then do the same thing here where I can do const minutes equals that and then return format time minutes. Okay, uh, this will be const too. All right, and now I need to put these in the, shouldn't it be less than, oh yeah, I thought that was less than for some reason. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Tom, that's why, you, I was wondering why you had that. I thought maybe I was forgetting an HTML tag. You're right, thanks everyone, it's less than. Okay, so now let me put these in the DOM display minutes and display seconds. Oh, format time. Oh, it's this dot format time. Um, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, here. I have to call the method. Okay, so this dot format time. Cool. Sweet. So now I just need to start the timer. All right. Um, so I have the set interval here. So first, let me make a method on the start button. So I'll do at click equals start. And I'll go ahead and add all these at clicks. So for stop, it's at click equals stop. For reset, it's at click equals reset. All right. Okay. So I am starting a set interval here. And um, so in set interval, every second, I'm going to have to recalculate the total seconds. So I'm basically going to just minus one second off of total seconds, I guess. Uh, so total seconds minus equals one. And, oh, it's this dot total seconds, this dot total seconds. Let me see how that is. Sweet, cool. All right, but there's no way of stopping it now. So I'm gonna let that keep counting down. Um, so to stop it, I need to actually have a reference to um, this interval so that I can clear it. What if the time is at zero? I haven't gotten there yet. The time, it's probably going to count down to negative numbers right now. Um, but it's not there yet. So, thank you. Um, let's see, so I have display. Oh, I don't need this display anymore because I have those in computed now. I do need, so I need a reference to this timer. I'm kind of waiting to see what happens if the minutes are correct when it counts down. Five. Yay! Cool. Um, so now I, I need a reference to the timer instance that I start. So I guess I'm just going to call it timer instance and 
say, um, yeah, I'll st start it with null, I guess. So I have a timer instance and I'll set this dot interval. So this dot timer instance. So now I have a reference to the timer instance. Um, as long as I don't start multiple instances, because then I'll just have no reference to them. So what I can do here is use this dot clear interval. Um, oh, and then pass it. No, 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 it's not this. What am I doing? It's a uh, this dot timer instance. So I can clear interval on the timer instance. And then for reset, I'll go ahead and do this. So I can call this dot stop, which will clear the interval in case it hasn't already been cleared. And then I can reset the time. So for right now, I'll just do because I'm I'm not dealing with the breaks yet. So I guess I'll just do this dot total seconds is 25 times 60. So total seconds is 25 times 60 when I reset it. Okay. Yeah, and that's one reason why I wanted to use Vitify today cuz I knew it would be a little bit easier to make a nice looking app versus just trying out kind of different design frameworks each time. All right, start, stop, okay, start, goes down again, stop, stop, stop. Oh, because I click start twice. Okay, we're going to have to fix this bug. Um, reset. I'm going to have to refresh. So if I only click it once and then stop, you know, I'm doing a clear interval on it. So I can do start, stop, reset. Okay, that all works. But if I do start and then start again, and then start again. See how fast it's counting down? Keep, keep clicking start. <laughs> and then I stop. And because I lost references to all of those intervals that I started. All right, let me, let me clear that. So I'm gonna have to do some kind of check here. Uh, so before I start, I should actually Reset should be disabled when it's running. That's a good idea. Um, uh, so here, let me just do this real quick. So let me do this dot stop before it started. So now I can't. So if I click start multiple times here, it doesn't matter. And if I click stop, it still works. Okay, so reset, disabling reset. It's a feature. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to work as long if my timer goes faster. Um, okay, so reset. How do I, so how do I know? Because let's say I clear interval here. Um, let me actually see what it is after I clear the interval. Because I don't think it's a, f is it a false, does it, is it a falsy value? Let me see. Okay, so inside Pomodoro, what is interval right now? Okay, let me refresh it. Because the timer instance should be null starting out. Yeah, timer instance is null right now. So let me start, stop, reset. Yeah, it's still pointing to the same timer instance even after I stop or refresh. So what I could do is in reset, 
I could clear that instance so that uh no 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 that won't work never mind that was faulty logic okay um what should I do then so I could set a boolean maybe I'll set a boolean like timer going or something and that way I can know so I can disable the reset button like if timer started um, unless someone else has a better idea that's what I'm gonna do so is is running is running is that a good idea so it starts off as false and then in um, in start I'll do this dot is no because so reset if I want them to only be able to reset if it's already stopped then I need to know if it's currently running yeah so I think I'll just automatically in the start function I'll do is running is true and in stop I'll do this dot is running is false oh and then let me get go to the button now in reset I'll do disabled here so I'll put disabled equals is running so if it's running it will be disabled let me see if that works um, yeah it should I guess it should be disabled here or if it matters so now when I start now that it's running it's disabled when I stop it it works again okay cool um, what's next? Let's see. Oh, I wanted to add a progress bar. Oh, and I need to do the brakes. Let me do the brakes first. How, how is that going to work? Um, so for short break and long break, actually, I only want to change the time here. I want all of these features still here. So I wonder if I could do... So really all I want is one tab. Um, so I wonder if there are events. Let me look at tabs again here. There must be an event I can capture and just change the time. Let's see. So, okay, yeah, I'm in tabs. And now in the API, I can see events. Okay, so there's a change event emitted when the tab is changed. And this is in the VTabs component. So I can capture that here. I think I can. So let me do at change equals one second making sure I can see everything all right um, what was I just doing oh yeah so at change equals um, what should I call this? So change change tab change timer type timer type um, and then I can make a method for that 
So I'll do it here. And I should, so I should get the number of the tab, I think. So let me just log out that number and see if that changed. Cause I don't know if I'm gonna be intercepting their event. So yeah, let me see. So, um, okay. Let me open the console. Oh wait, Cham change timer type is not defined on the instance, but referenced during render. Oh, I think this is an old error. V content is deprecated. Oh, right, right. Use V main instead. Well, I, I set it up from their, um, their CLI, so that's weird. I remember, so they changed this. This is something that Vitify changed, so, um, but I might as well update it. So it only takes a second. Okay, so it wants me to use a V main wrapper instead of V content. So let me see if that went away, if it still works. Yeah. Okay, so now when I change tabs, yeah, it's showing me the tab numbers. Wait, long break to that one. Okay, yeah. So now I see the tabs. So I need to change the time based off of the tabs. So I should have the times stored somewhere. And Um, so I have tab titles here and I wonder if I should do objects because I need the number of time for each one of these. So I think what I'm going to change this to is, um, so here I'm going to do current timer. I'm going to break everything. So to current timer. And then here I'm going to do timers. And I'm going to change these into objects. Oh yeah, name. And wait, let me fix, uh, fix all this. All right, so current timers which is actually this, so this needs to be, each one needs to be its own object. So the name and then I'll put time or I'll put minutes. Minutes will be 25 for this timer because we'll just assume they don't want to time seconds for right now. Um, okay, and now I'll put minutes for a short break will be five minutes. And then, oops, for a long break, it will be Um, minutes, I don't know, some, some people do 25, some people do 10, but hopefully I'll get around to doing a settings menu in this stream so they can change the time for it. Um, oh yeah, there we go. So timers is a whole um, array of objects now. Current timer is the index of where the timer is in the array. So I'm gonna have to change. Okay, so here's the V model. So I'll change this to current timer and then 
timers. So where are my tab titles? Oh, they'll be in here. So um, timers, what did I call that? I can't remember what I called it already. Yeah, it's just timers. So for timer in timers, and I'll set the key as timer dot name. And then this will be the same thing. So timer dot name. And does it work? Wait, I have timer type is not defined on the instance, but reference during render. Um, oh yeah, vmodel timer type. So this should also be current timer. And then I'll just update the method name to match. So current timer. And then change. This will be current timer. OK. So now this should all work. And this actually you know you know I might not even want this inside cuz all these tabs are is inside of the card here and I don't even need this inside of a tab item I could just not have any tab items since I want this to stay in perpetuity um I don't want it to, to move or change when the tabs change I just want the number to change so I'm capturing the event of the tab change but I don't actually want all of this inside so I think I can just get rid of all these tab items here and see if that works oh no um, didn't really like it Okay, never mind. Apparently it does not work. So I guess I need tab items. Um So how do I make this stay then? I mean, what if I what if I just take the card out? And if I take this V card outside of tabs. Oh, because I left it inside. So let me see what happens if I take it outside. Oh yeah, that works perfectly. So maybe it was just because I had that inside of tabs. Let me try to get rid of these then. I think I just made a mistake. Yeah, it was because I accidentally kept this stuff inside of the V tabs. Okay, so I didn't need that. That's good. Can we refactor the tab? Um, yeah, we could. Do we need to? Even this whole component is only 111 lines long. Um, if we were to take out some of the logic, the tabs really only takes up, like, this is all the tabs is, all the V tabs. It's these, like, eight lines of code. So it's not that much. We could probably eventually move, I guess, some of this stuff out. Or maybe just move everything out into components. Let me get rid of this color basil because I don't know why it's there. Okay. So now, like 30 minutes left. Okay, so timer works, shows up. So I'm getting the event. So what do I want to do with this event? I want to change the type. So what I'll have to do is change the current. Oh, cool, yeah. So 
That, that should be easy because I can change the current timer. Yeah, if I have time at the end, I will refactor. Current timer equals, um, I guess just num, because that will be 0, 1, or 2. And then, okay, so if the current timer is 0, 1, or 2, I need to calculate, I need to recalculate total seconds. So when the tab changes, I'm going to have to call um, reset. Yeah, I'm going to have to call reset here and pass in the total seconds, I guess. No. Um, hmm. Okay, so I'm setting the current timer. Let's say I, I call the method change current timer. I changed the current timer. Now I have to recalculate the seconds. So I should be calling reset, this dot reset, because I do want, I want to stop the timer and I also want to reset it. But I need to be passing in, yeah, let me, I need to be passing in the minutes. So, yeah, because I'll be able to get the minutes off of here and then calculate. So, I'm going to pass in the minutes and then this is going to be minutes, minutes times 60. So, here I'll have to pass in the this dot timers the num the index of which timer I want of the current timer this dot timers dot minutes yeah and then I'll get the minutes of the current timer so dot minutes pass the timer object um, do I need the object for anything else other than minutes because I'm also going to be calling this reset from here. So, yeah, I'm going to be calling reset from here. So I need to do, I need to also pass in the minutes here. So I wonder, I guess I just do the same thing, only it will be this. I don't need the this dot. So I'll pass in the minutes there too. When I click reset. Okay. Sweet. Let me see if this works. Yeah, it works. I can stop. I can reset. No, I can't. Okay, so reset doesn't work. But the reset here does work. Let me see, make sure there are no errors. Yeah, so this works, but for some reason when I start it, stop it, reset, that doesn't work anymore. So I have some kind of a bug here. Um, oh, timers is undefined. Oh, oh, right. Um, num. So I obviously can't do this. So I need to do current timer because there's no num there so now I can go into timers pass in the current timer which is the index of the timer and do dot minutes so I should be able to do that let's see stop reset okay sweet I am happy about this. Reset. Okay, so there are a couple things. So the timer, let's see. What were we talking about earlier? Oh yeah, uh, the timer will count down to negative numbers. So we should stop it. And, um, hmm. 
So I should set kind of a catch-all in here. So if this dot total, you should change the interval to 10 milliseconds. Oh, to play with people. I think so. I I want to do a settings menu so people can change their own intervals here. Uh, let me actually see. Yeah, that'll just count down real fast. Oh yeah, like a stopwatch timer. That's kind of it. Looks cool though. All right, undo. Um. All right, so if this dot total, um, oh yeah, total seconds, it's right below it. Okay, so total seconds is less than or equal to zero, then I'll call this dot stop and return out of the function. And I think, so I think that should work. And just to test that out, I will do, well, I guess I'll do this. So I'm gonna temporarily change this to being five seconds. Start. Sweet! So it reset because um, because the timer's not going anywhere. It must have called the stop function, and that's why reset isn't disabled anymore. Cool. So let me undo that. And um. Okay. So total seconds this actually should be computed because right now I'm just betting on this being 25 but if I do make um, this is actually easier than I thought yeah so what if I make a settings menu so that the user can update these these settings. Um, let's see, what would a settings menu look like? Um, I don't have a router in my app, so I don't want to route them. I don't want to bother installing it, so let me do a dialog. Click me. form dialog. Yeah, so I could have some basic form elements in a dialog like this. Um, yeah, I think I'll borrow this. So, let me, and actually the dialog is definitely going in its own component. Because that's going to be too much. So, user settings or let me just do not user. So I don't really have users. Um, dialog settings dialog dot view. Let me do a template, and then I'll copy some of this. Let me open this again. Okay. Um. Close, yeah, let me close it. Okay, so let me copy this. And for right now, yeah, I'll just, 
I'll just see. So I don't want the row, I just want a dialog. And go ahead and close the card, close the dialog. And I need to first V model. So persistent means I can't just close it by clicking outside, which is good for a form. Oh cool, it gives me an animation too. Um, so I have to click the close button. Um, and now I need I need a V model, so I'll have to pass that in via props. So let me do a script tag here and props. Let's see. What I guess I'll just have a dialog prop and this will be a boolean so I'll do type boolean and required is true okay um what else oh yeah let me import this component so I can start playing with it Um, where should, oh yeah, in script tags, I'll do import settings dialog from settings dialog dot view. And then here I'll have to register the components. So settings dialog. I know I didn't mock up this dialog, but because um, this is just the basics, because I thought maybe I wasn't even going to get to it, because all of these have taken a little bit longer than I thought. But I guess the timer isn't that hard to do. So, um, let's see. So, user can choose timer. Yeah, so this is where I thought. I was gonna do they can select and this isn't even real clear how I wrote this user can choose timer short break or long break oh no I think I was talking about the t the tabs here um, oh yeah here is where I was talking about settings so user can set the number of minutes for each type of timer yeah and this will be actually the last requirement besides some optional things I had in case I needed more stuff to do. So they can set the number of minutes for each timer. So I guess it would just be like three input boxes and then they can update the minutes if they want. So um, what am I doing? Oh yeah. I imported the settings dialog, so now I can put it in here. So I'll put it... Do I really have two cards? Yeah, I do have two cards. That's fine. So I'll put it here. Oops. And I need to pass in a, a dialog boolean. So let me do that and then I need to create the dialog boolean here um, let me do it after timers I guess so dialog and I'll do false oh I did it inside of timers so let me yeah, do it after timers. Ah, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, dialogue is false. I'm passing that in here. Oh, right. So the thing that I'm doing here, I'm passing it in as a prop, but I'm still using this activator button. So I actually need to turn this off. Get rid of that. And... Just put some text here as a placeholder. 
Okay, and now I need some kind of a settings button on the page. And I think what I'm going to do is a floating ax a, f a floating action button. Since I'm using material anyway, so floating floating action buttons. Need some water. Oh, I feel like I've been talking forever. Does anyone have any questions, suggestions? Anything? Anything else to talk about? Um, okay. Let me do floating. Yeah, I think I can just steal one of these. And these are just regular buttons. Where is it? Oh, it's a V button, but it's just set as fab. It's given this fab prop. Um, okay, so I'm gonna copy this. Let's see. And let me put it just on the page somewhere. Actually, it shouldn't even be inside a V card. So I wonder if I should put this in app. Let me try it here. V button. Oops. Um. Okay. Maest Maestro. Oh, it is that a teacher? Get confused with m maestro. Um, let's see. Okay, wait. I have a dialogue, and MDI plus. So let me do MDI settings and just guess that there's a settings icon, or is it gear? Oh, cool. It might be gear icon. It's not gear either. Let me actually look at icon. So, material design, setting. This page always takes me a while to load for some reason. Yeah, what is what is this one? Oh, it's cog outline. Uh, so MDI cog outline. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, this is good except for the color. The color is not nice. But we do secondary for the color. Yeah, that's okay. Um, let's see. So this is left. Let me do right. Okay. Uh, that actually doesn't look bad there. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad. And it's away from everything else. So now if I click it, I need to... Uh, what do I need to do? Open the dialog. Yeah, I'd, well, I don't want small though. Let me... Oh no, I do want small, I do want small. Alright. Maybe top right? Let me try. Top. Right. No, then it's over the tab. I would actually like it on the page up here, but then I'm going to have to do this in the parent. So I would have to do in app um, so here did it change back to pink? Did I copy? I think I copied the right, wrong thing. Ah, I don't know what just happened. That's weird. Oh well. 
secondary uh, top right oh wow that's off the page okay so that should probably be inside of the container then so let me put it here yeah which is why that's a big reason why I use VS Code Vim instead of regular Vim now because of copy pasting um, oh yeah and this was cog cog outline so why let me see um, let me try inside the row then otherwise I'm gonna look in DevTools and see why it's doing that nope it doesn't doesn't like it okay so it is absolute let me try getting rid of absolute okay so now that puts it here which isn't actually bad up here um, and then I think if I moved it outside of the row it would go more towards here but since everything is so centered right now, I think I'll just leave it here. But now I need to I need to have data inside this component. So and I know this is not too important, but I just I like to have a return statement. Keep everything the same. So let me do return and I'll have what will I call it here so I'll call it dialogue from here so I'll have dialogue is false and then when they click on the button it sets wait at click so at a click event it sets dialog to true okay and then I need to pass in that dialog to Pomodoro so let me pass in dialog as dialog if I had view X I wouldn't need to be passing to grandchildren but there's so few components I guess it's okay I'm just passing one thing. Okay, so dialogue, I passed it into Pomodoro, so now I need to receive it in Pomodoro via props here. So let me do props. Wait, uh, props object, and I'm getting dialogue, which is the type is Boolean required is true all right and now I didn't put it here oh yeah I did put it here so let me take it off of there okay so I have dialogue and I'm passing in dialogue here okay what else do I need to do then Oh sweet, it opens. Oh, but it's persistent and I have no close button. <laughs> let me um, add the buttons then. So let me go back to dialog in here. Dialog in here. And where was the form one? Yeah, I'm just gonna keep copying from here. So vcard actions oh right I won't be able to set dialogue to false from in the component I'm gonna have to yeah I don't have um, I'm gonna have to call an event or a method or something 
or just install Vuex for one small thing. Uh, where was I? Where was it? Okay, so in Pomodoro now. No, no, no. In settings dialog. Inside of card, I'm going to add the actions. And dialog, I can't do dialog is false. So um, should I do a custom event? I haven't used events in so long because I pretty much just use Vuex or pass things between components. Um, should I do, yeah, let me try doing a view custom event. View custom event. Okay, so emit events, so it's basically the same as doing listening to the kebab case version. Right, and I think in view three, actually, this syntax got better too. So maybe I don't, yeah, maybe I'll skip events and Oh wait, it didn't throw an error? I changed props. Yeah, avoid mutating prop directly. So that's just a warning actually. Um, oh yeah, but now it doesn't open now because I changed the prop from inside um, inside the child component. Um, so let me let me just pass down a method, see how that works. I think that will be easier. So methods, let me do close, mo not close modal because it's called dialog. So close dialog and this dot dialog equals false. And then I'll have to pass the method in to Pomodoro here. So I would have to pass in close dialog equals close dialog and then let's see close dialog yep it's spelled correctly so that's okay that's an app now I need another prop so I'll have to do close dialog type is a function required is true um, and now I need to pass this in. Okay, so I accepted it in props. Now I need to pass it into settings dialog. So close dialog equals close dialog. And now at the event, oh yeah, I need to do um, that. Okay, so now I have closed dialog, and now, let's see, let me try to do it in the cancel button and call close dialog at click. So I don't like how long this line is. Alright, let me do the same thing here, so save, okay. Oh, it doesn't like it. Invalid handler for click got undefined. Okay. So it didn't like whatever I did. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I'm clicking close. Oh, no. Wait, it closed just fine. Okay. Uh, I just needed to refresh, I guess. So for save, I'm going to have a different method. So here I'll do save 
yeah, I'll just call it save because there's nothing else going on. Um, so after props, I need to do methods here. And I'll do I just tried to click your close button. Oh, on the screen. That would be really cool if I could do interactive live streams where people could type and hit buttons. I guess if I did glitch or something. I don't know how many people could be in there though. It might crash. Um, that's. I think that's the future of live streaming. The next evolution will be interactive streams. Yeah, the save method could, and since the data is in there, I guess, yeah, that's a good idea. So let me just receive that then. So save would be of type function and required is true. Oh, uh, wait, so. Um, at click, yeah, so that will call the parent, and now, get out of there. So now in here, I'll need to have a save method that I pass in. So let me put this on some new lines. Okay. So, uh, setting, okay, so now I need to make a save method and or I should should I do save? Yeah, because there's no other save functionality in the app. So I can just call it save. So let me do save. And I will need to call this dot close dialog though. Because I do want it to close when I hit save. So let me try that out. Okay. Save. Yeah, it closes fine. All right. Yeah, you're right. It makes more sense to put it in there. So now I need the form items in here, and I also want a header. So let's see. Oh, I have four minutes. Um, I wonder if I should... One second. Yeah, let me try to get as much done as I can. So, um, V card title, yeah, I want the title. So let me put this in my settings dialog and get rid of that. Here I'll do, I'll just put settings. And then here I'll do V card uh, text. And then in here I'll put the form items. So, what should I put? I guess just input. And then let me find. Oh, wait, wait, that's not what I want. I want text fields. And then I think I can get a number here. Or yeah, I can put the type as whatever I want. Prefix and suffix. Um, yeah, I can add validation. I won't have time to do validation for it, unfortunately. But let me just get a basic text field then. And yeah, V text field. That's it. And I'll put it inside here. Oops. So, oh wait. Um, 
we'll make it self-closing and then label will be Pomodoro and then I'll make three of these so uh, was it short um, actually I can loop over these so I need to pass in my timers to this now so let me pass in this whole timers object to settings so I'll pass in timers equals timers and let's see now I can loop through oh let me receive it first so put it before save so timers um, type is um, ob no array array required equals is true okay and yeah so the text fields yeah this is what I want to loop through I guess oh but then I have to save hmm I'm gonna have to save the unless I want to directly V model no I can't I'm gonna have to set the default as the timer amount and then save the new amount that's entered and it is 12 right now so I'm not sure okay I am just messaging free code camp And yeah, it's getting more complicated. So, um, what I can do is okay, so I can loop through and display here, that's easy enough, but I want to actually save a new time. So, actually, my V model here has to be something new. Um, so this is going to have to be updated timers and I think that I can set a default on data here so I could do my default timers and this could be an array of times and then uh, I could say when this component is mounted is this the best way to do it? I don't know I'm just trying to get this um, done or thought through I guess <laughs> we want more minutes um, yeah I don't want to hold it up too much longer but on mounted, so on mounted, I could set these default timers to be whatever I pass in as timers to start. So I could do, let's see, if I loop through this dot timers dot map, the result will be default timers and dot map. And then I get the timer in here. So that's an object. That's the timer object. And then I can return. Um, what do I return? Oh, yeah. Timer dot. Is it timer dot time? Oh, minutes. Minutes. Okay. I think that will work. And now I have a brand new array in here that I can V model to. So I can loop through here, I can do v4 equals um, 
Did I really call it default? Why is it called default? I should be calling this like updated. Updated timers. Updated timers. Yeah, this isn't a perfect solution really, but I guess it can be refactored because then if they don't update anything, am I just going to save everything anyway? Oh, I already called it updated timers here. Wait, what is, oh, it's complaining. Oh yeah, I don't have the bind key yet. So, so let me do updated timers and then set a key here to be, um, hmm, what do I want for the key? Let me just do, Oh, I didn't even, let me do time, timer in, or timer and then I in updated timers, and then the key can just be I right here. Okay, and then the V model will be updated timers I, so it will be that at that index in the array where the timer will model to that index basically okay so data property must be a function did I do that oh yeah uh, let me change this oh and then I have to return from here too oh wait uh, return an object and then let me just do updated timers what why isn't my shift button working oh there we go and this is an empty array okay okay it doesn't like what I'm doing. Oh yeah, it does. Sweet. Awesome. So let me look at the V model then. Um, in the, which component is that in? It's, oh yeah, it's inside of settings, the settings dialog component. So I have, okay, so I have props which are the timer objects, the timers array of objects. And then I have in my component data, I have updated timers. Sweet. Cool. Uh, it does change it to a string as soon as I change this. But um, then I could just save, let me see if I can set up the save function in just a few minutes. Um, so in save, I can pass the updated timers. Um, let's say, let's say I just pass the updated timers as like an easy way to save this. And then what do I do in here? Um, where's the save function? So save will take updated timers. And the easiest, easiest thing to do, I mean, this has no validation or anything, so just hope I'm typing in. Actually, I can do the easiest form of HTML validation and say that the type of this is a number, so they can't put in anything else. Oh yeah, and then it won't change to a string either. Uh, let me validate that real quick. It shouldn't change to a string, does it? Or is, does it just do that for every HTML input? Okay, let me open the settings dialog again. And now when I change a timer, yeah, it still changes to a string. Oh well, that's fine. 
Um, now I can do, so I can loop through timers. So I can loop through this dot, um, hmm. Yeah, I could loop through this dot timers and then update values or what should I do? I should loop through updated timers, right? Or no, I, I should do this dot timers equals this dot timers um, dot map. and then do timer and then I could do return updated timer uh, no, no no what am I doing I'm not even thinking right now um, I could do timer no I need to return an object so I need to get everything that's already on timer in the object, which would just be the name, and then I'll overwrite the minutes. So the minutes will be overwritten by updated timers at the index of whatever this is in the loop. So at that index. So I can do that. Updated timers. Yeah, because this is an array. Updated timers is an array. And that will put just that one value into minutes. And that will overwrite the minutes that's already in the timer in this dot timers. Okay, let's see if this works. And actually, um, this needs to be a number. So uh, let me parse int real quick. So parse int because I'm not dealing with seconds, so I'm just gonna, yeah, I don't want anything else, just minutes. So parse int, it's default base 10, update timers, okay. Let me close this and refresh. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, because that is not, um, wait, let me see. Let me change this to 2. Save. Yeah, short break is 2 now, long break is 10. This is 20. Oh, because the default is that. Okay. Well, um, can I, in data, does anyone know if I can reference um, this as the default? Like timers, this dot current timer. Well, I'll have to do this here too. So it would be this dot, this dot current timer. And then, no, I have to watch, uh, that was a dumb idea. I'd have to watch it. So I would have to watch the changes in these and then update total seconds. And that's what I should be doing to probably add that and compute it. So whenever anything in timers changes, I can update the total seconds. Um, but you can still, I mean, this still works. It's just you have to change the tab before you can see it working. And then you can still start, stop, reset. All right, so I have to log off here. Um, feel free to, you know, make a PR, raise an issue, create a suggestion. Um, I appreciate everyone who's made suggestions, raised issues. Ashik Paul, I think that's how you pronounce it. He uh, contributed a couple times to the other projects I've been doing, made them a little bit better. Um, awesome. Thank you, Anish. I appreciate that. And thanks for chatting, everybody. I appreciate the chat and not talking to myself. That's That always feels nice. So yeah, here are the five projects. Uh, some of them better than others. Today's was probably the best looking project. 
that pretty much works, but could use some some TLC, some help in some ways. Yeah, if you have any suggestions for me, also leave them in the comments below. And I hope to see you in another live stream. Thanks, Sashi. Thanks, everybody. Take care.